pink, 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 pink. Look at that. Imagine if I actually grew an arm that looked just like that. I wouldn't be mad, right? Pink zebra. Hello, hello, and welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Diana Chu here at Slow Gaze. If you are interested in seeing all of the gorgeous blushes that I'm about to say goodbye to, please keep watching. I do explain my collection a little bit. I go through every single product that I have on here on this little table. I have quite a few and I'm going to get rid of some. It is time. If you haven't already, please subscribe. It would mean so much to me and it would help my little channel grow. Let's dive in. Well, hello. I am here to do an old fashioned blush declutter with you. I'm not gonna throw everything on the floor. I do have it in a pile next to me and I'm just gonna go one by one and tell you about my products. I do wanna move my collection into a more clean beauty space, but very slowly and thoughtfully. So declutters are one of those steps. I also don't want to just do a declutter because I wanna do a declutter just to make content. And then I'm left with holes in my own collection that I might feel like I need to fill with more shopping. I am not about supporting the idea of overconsumption. I know that I have a lot of products and way more than any person with two cheeks needs. Any purchase of blush, they're always tied to not just the product itself. It's either tied to some marketing campaign or some kind of fantasy self that I am holding in my head and romanticizing. A lot of what blushes represent to me, blush to me is very sophisticated. <laughs> so is lipstick, but it's a lot more natural feeling to me to wear blush. So before we dive in, I would love for you to subscribe. It would really mean a lot to me. It would help my little channel grow. I upload every single week, but without further ado, let's dive in. I just counted the amount of blushes that we're going through and I have exactly 24 items. That could be individual pots of blushes. I have some palettes as well. Whew, that's both more and less than I thought I would have. Tells you how skewed my perception is of how much I have. I'm gonna go through it brand by brand. This is the Patrick Ta line of blushes. I purchased his cheek brush, which I think is just this gorgeous long stemmed brush. It has a really nice weight to it. It feels really balanced. She's seductive. This was his original monochrome moment line. The relief on the pan is all the way down. I've used this quite a bit. It does create a hard pan a lot. So I had to go in with scotch tape to kind of remove that. This is what it looks like. It's so mauvey and gorgeous. It's really a special formula because it's so sheer and I feel like it's really buildable. So I don't know if I'm going to keep this. This is going to be in my maybe pile because I do have She's So LA, which is a totally different ball game. His package is very much like the Tom Ford quads, except that it has the tooth popping over the top, whereas Tom Ford's has the tooth popping up. His powder formula is much improved. It is less sheer. I love this color. I also love the shade of cream. I definitely reach for this way more than the other, so I'm gonna keep this. Keeping with creams, next up is the MAC Glow Play Blush in So Natural. This has been hyped up by several YouTubers that I watched. It was Alana Davidson, and then I think it was Jamie Page and Jessica Braun, etc., etc. These are all people that have, I think, fairer skin tones to me. So even though that shows up pretty well the way I swatch it, somehow this just disappears on my cheeks every single time. It is just too light for me and I've tried to use it a lot. Somehow it just is one touch too faint for me. I love the texture. I do love the way that it sits. You know, there's nothing wrong with the product it itself. It's just the shade and I feel like I have to get rid of this because it just doesn't give me the right amount of flush that I'm looking for. This will be in the discard pile. I have two cream blushes from Tower 28. I have the Magic Hour shade and the Golden Hour shade. Magic Hour I purchased first and I was really excited about this. $20, I thought it was a great price point. I loved the color. It looks great, but it's just too white. For some reason, it's just not translucent. It just looks like a white cast underneath all that pink. And when I put it on, it looks like it just sits on top of my cheeks and it doesn't feel like a true flush. And that's why I bought the Golden Hour shade, which is what I will be keeping. This is a perfect peachy tone and it can sheer out to this gorgeous peach, but it doesn't have all that opacity to it. So this is actually way more wearable to me on my own skin tone. 
I'm gonna keep the golden hour one and I'm gonna put this in my maybes. Okay, two more cream blushes. This is the Fenty Beauty Cheeks Out Petal Poppin, which I absolutely adore and it looks disgusting in the pan because I do use a big brush with it. This is actually the brush that I use and you can see that it actually goes over the edge of the product quite a bit. So it does pick up this beautiful pink flush and I actually love having a really cool pink in my arsenal because I use bronzers a lot and I would put a lot of bronzer on and then I would just touch really cool pinky blush onto the apples of my cheeks and it would just tie everything together. So I'm definitely keeping this. I do like this formula. I think that it stays really nicely. I know people say that it's small, but it doesn't bother me too much. I'm just gonna keep this color. Summertime Wine. I thought this was a really gorgeous mauve tone, super rosy. And it's just one step towards raspberry. I hardly use this color, so I'm gonna put this in the maybe pile. Still on the cream train, we have Kosas Velvet Melon, Tropic Equinox High Intensity, and then Eighth Muse High Intensity. Ugh, this just breaks my heart. Actually, all three of these I'm not in love with because this is the same problem I have with the Tower 28. It is such a gorgeous peach apricot, but it has so much white in it and it barely shows up on my skin. It just has this nice little pink kiss, but I wish I had bought this one in the high intensity and I didn't. I just thought this was gonna be a perfect little flush. When you put it on my cheeks, you can barely see anything. It just looks slightly dewy. And then I do love the highlighter, but it's just not worth keeping this compact if I only use one side. I'm gonna put this in the maybe pile. Eighth Muse High Intensity, which is meant to have double the amount of pigment. This has a much less emollient texture because it really is jam-packed. I wonder what that looks like next to that Fenty Beauty Summertime Wine. It's almost the same. Very raspberry, I think it's gorgeous, but I don't know, if I'm gonna keep one of them, I'm gonna keep this one and not the Summertime Wine. So I'm gonna put the Summertime Wine into the discard pile and then I'm gonna keep this other shade by Kosas because that's such a gorgeous highlight. I really like this stuff. So I'll keep this. When I say discard pile, I'll figure out on the back end whether or not it's gonna go to a better home, a friend or a family member, or if it's truly gonna get discarded. Tropic Equinox. So this one is also a high intensity shade. It has a gorgeous gold champagne-y. The highlight shade is much too dark for my skin tone. And when you touch this and put it on my actual skin, it looks not just orange, it actually reads yellow. It looks like a yellow base thing. I don't know if that's reading, but can you see how like yellow orange that's reading? It's almost like a mac and cheese <laughs> orangey color. I just don't think it's very flattering for me. It's not deep enough to be a contour or a bronzer, and it's not orange enough to be just this cute little like sun-kissed blush shade either. It just looks really strange on my skin. Oh, it's just really unfortunate. I've been keeping this around also because I'm like, oh, I just don't want to give this away. Maybe I'll find a way to use it, but I think it's time. I'm gonna put this in the discard pile. Now, these are some blushes that I know I love and it'll be very hard for me to let any of these go. These are the Tata Harper Lip and Cheek Tints. This one is in very popular. I've shown it in quite a few videos. I love this stuff because it smells so fresh and summertime fresh and it shears out to this gorgeous dewy finish. It just smells like the epitome of summer. I've described it before as like strawberry banana smoothie with a little bit of watermelon rind, that fresh juiciness. It's just to die for this scent. And this one I actually bought in 2016. I like to try to mark when I bought things so that I know it only has a six month shelf life. So this is far expired, if you will. It still smells okay. I think it's definitely not as fresh as these other ones that I have. But then I also bought during Tata Harper's birthday sale very recently, these other two shades. This one is very sweet and this one is very charming. This top one, how low can you go? It shears out almost too light for me and it doesn't wear well throughout the day. So I like to use this for my lips. So I'm gonna use this up as much as I can on the lips. But this, this very charming shade has a far better shade for my skin tone. Like a little petal pink moment. 
I love it, love it, love it. So I'm gonna be keeping all of these and I'm really trying to use up this very popular shade. I'm so close. Next we have two Natasha Denona palettes. I know that this is not technically a blush palette. I try to use this as blush because it does say blush and bronze powder on here, this color. I'm really not sure if it'll show up because I have so much product on my cheeks already. Onto the apples of my cheeks, e.l.f small stipple brush. I know that's not a true color comparison, but I do find that this is my perfect shade of bronzy blush that I never thought I needed. <laughs> and all of the other products I really love. I always go in with all four of them whenever I use this palette. I start with her Glow Cream Base, then I add the Super Glow, and then I go down the line. These are all highly curated colors. Push and pull between cream and powder, highlight and shadow, warm and cool. You can see that this one has a lot more cool tones in it, and then this gold color has so much warmth in it that they really start to speak a different language, and it gives it such, it gives your cheeks such a nuanced flush. I just, I'm obsessed with her palettes. I really wanted to buy her newest bronze one, but I'm trying, really trying to not buy so much. So I'm keeping this one. Same with this. I don't think I can get rid of it. This is more of a new purchase for me, but her Bloom Blush and Glow I bought because I loved the tan and bronze palette so much. She is just a, such a genius. If I start with this Glow Cream Base, seems really light. That petal pinkness is almost there, but then I go in with this raspberry blush shade on top in a very light-handed way, and then if I mix on top this corally shade with this highlight shade. See how the raspberry takes a step back and then I just get this gorgeous nuanced flush that starts to read coral on top. It has givings of berry underneath and it has this cool pink flush to kind of radiate outwards. And then finally the Glow Extreme just adds that highlight on top. I really, really appreciate Natasha Denona's cheek palettes. I know that her eyeshadows get so much love. I really think these are special so I'm not getting rid of this anytime soon. Love the packaging. I also think that the mirror is just perfect. I love that it can kind of hold its openness so I can really use this as an interface between my face and my face. The little falling glitters in one of her limited edition packages was just so enticing. I am a fiend for packaging. I just love anything that's kind of special and beautiful. Okay, let's talk pillow talk. Charlotte Tilbury's cheek to cheek pillow talk in intense and if you haven't picked up any of her blushes before they're in this wonderful areola looking compact it's like a little evil eye and you're supposed to swish around and then pop the center and then put it on it gives you the same effect as a highlight and a cheek flush it's picking up a lot of product so i'm trying to be careful because this can go extreme or intense very quickly. It has a lot of mauve in it, and I think this is quite similar to Patrick Ta's monochrome moment. I own a lot of Charlotte Tilbury, so I actually really love her products, but I haven't found a cheek color that's perfect for me yet. I tried her Pillow Talk regular, and that was too light. I've tried a couple of other ones, and this one just looks like it's great, and it looks like it's gonna be good. It just goes on a little bit too intense, See how I put it down and now it doesn't want to move from that place? I don't love that. I want a product that I can really work and rework as I go. This one just seems like it's gonna stain my cheeks. I stopped using it, so I, I'm going to pass on this one. Let's compare this to She's Seductive from Patrick Ta. This has a really sheer velvety texture that I really think that I can build up way better than the Charlotte Tilbury. So between the two, I think I would actually keep the Patrick Ta. That's still going in my maybes, but this, bye-bye. Here's another one that I'm really sad to not love so much. It's the Kevin Aquan Neo Blush in Sunset. It is this gorgeous coral. And I don't have a color like that, as you can see. I just never reach for this. It's just too pigmented. I know I could use the center of this, and it can give me just this gorgeous, like almost a NARS orgasm flush, but I just don't use it. It's so strong a color. I put this in my maybes and I want to compare it to a very new purchase of mine. It is the Chantecaille 
blush. I don't even know what it's called because it's so new. It's the Radiance Chic cheek and highlight duo in coral. I bought it because of the packaging. I really did. I stand for everything that Chantikai stands for. Love their commitment to the environment and their educational integrity. That said, this is a very expensive product. I'm just going to keep this no matter what. Like even if this expires and I turn 102, knock on wood, I'm going to keep this in my collection because it's such a beautiful compact. I love that it comes with a highlighter. This to me feels like a, almost like a baked glow highlighter. Let's see how far we can go down the arm. But I want to just watch this corally color next to the Kevin Aquan right here. And it definitely doesn't have that vibrancy than, that the Kevin Aquan has. So to me, this is far more wearable and I'm going to keep this and not keep the Kevin Aquan. A few more. And I'm noticing that I, I like to buy things in twos. I have two M Cosmetics uh, Heavenly Glow blushes. I have two cover effects and then I have two palettes from NARS. I'm just a creature of habit, I guess. Let's talk about the cover effects first. I love their little packaging. It looks like an old fashioned compact. It's about the size of my Apple mouse and it kind of gets dirty, but I love that. I don't know why. It just has such a friendly looking shell to it. When I open it up, I haven't even taken off the frosted plastic on top here, but this is the shade Warm Honey and I think it's just absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous, stunning. How many times can I say it? But I love that it has that shiny shade that's a little bit lighter and then this matte shade right here. And that is very similar to these tawnier shades up here. Love this formula. I'm going to have to keep both of them. The soft peach over here is definitely getting a lot more use. Can that even show up on a tattoo? Sorry, snake. My snake was not ready for that. This one is so much more delicate. That's where it confused me because the MAC Glow Play blush, I thought that was going to be perfect because I do wear shades like this and it seemed like it was going to be just right up my alley. Let me pull that out. So comparing the soft peach color to this Glow Play blush and She's So Natural, doesn't it seem like they're going to be perfect and they're going to be sisters and they're going to get along and I'm going to be like in cheek heaven. But this one really doesn't show up on me. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's the transparent base that it has. So I'm going to keep this one instead. You'll never pry these from my little paws. I love the M Cosmetics blushes and I really didn't think I would. <laughs> I'm skeptical when it comes to indie brands because, you know, they're trying to figure things out. This faded Clementine is my perfect tawny nude. It looks like it has a lot of shimmer running through it, and it does, and it gives me this perfect sun-kissed glow as well. Magic Hour is also one of my favorite pinks. It's so sheer and so buildable, but somehow it shows up on me and it works great with my bronzers. I love, love, love these, and I love the little mirror that it comes with. These are just perfect blushes to me. This is what I thought orgasm would be from NARS on my skin tone. Put together, I basically could just do with these two blushes. And my last two are these NARS palettes. So I have the Overlust right here and then Exposed. I just think these are such gorgeous packages. Watery scene on top made a lot of sense with these colors in here because the way they were described a translucent or a transparent binding so these actually should work on every single skin tone and I really love that NARS thought it through and kind of activated their technology to allow for pigments to show up really true and meld with the skin and it just works with your own skin tone. I thought that was really fantastic. You get a lot of product in here and you can see how well these are swatching. I even love this highlight shade that's quite blinding, but it just, oh, I also love this as eyeshadows. I'm using it up. I'm keeping this. Overlust palette, I think is still being sold. This one has an 18 month shelf life. This one has a one year shelf life. The only hesitation I have with the, this palette are these Gelee highlights. When I swatch them, they look just fine. You're like, okay, wow, that's a lot of pigment. Okay, wow. You can pick it up. It's soft and creamy. They really have distinct tones, like everything. Did I just swatch that twice? No. <laughs> and you can see how they relate to their sister color in this powder formula. However, when you go in with a brush, 
it doesn't really pick up this product. These I can only use with my fingers, which half the time I'm like, oh, I can't be bothered. I want to go in with a brush and then I pick up a highlighter that I have anyway. If you're someone who just has one cheek palette and that's it, I would actually highly recommend this palette. These look like kind of muted, kind of boring blush tones, infinitely wearable. The colors are Let It Burn, Get Lost, and Body Talk. All about this palette, I'm going to keep it. So where are we at? Put in my discard pile, one, two, tres, cuatro, cinco, and then we have a seis over here. So there are six different products that I will be saying goodbye to. These two I haven't decided on. I think I'm going to pass on the Magic Hour. I really don't think this is the color for me. And if I wanted a cream blush, I would use one of the Tata Harper ones instead. She's seductive. Ugh, this just has such a good blush memory for me. But the more I think about this, I actually have this shade in this NARS palette. This color is looking very similar to this, and this comes out of the pan so much creamier, easier to build. I want to use this palette more, so I'm not going to be keeping this. Goodbye. Thank you for your service. How many am I keeping? Let me do a count. 16 blushes remain. That is eight blushes for one cheek and another eight blushes for another cheek. I realize that is so much more than any one person needs. <laughs> I acknowledge it and I'm going to try to use up what I have. Thank you so much for watching. If you have made it to the end of this video, please leave a comment down below if you have any specific questions on any of the products that I've shown. I'm happy to review them. I also do the rolling reviews on my channel now, so if you wanted to see like a palette and how many times and ways I can use it, I'd be happy to maybe start a rolling review on a cheek palette. Just let me know. I'm open to ideas. I hope you are being safe and well out there. Take care and I'll see you in my next video. Adios.